Cinematic sequences are often hard to escape in video games. Some of the leading titles we all know and love are basically designed to feel like we're playing through Hollywood movies. And, while you may be of the opinion that movies and games shouldn't mix, and you're not interested in games with cinematics of any sort, I'd still bet that at some point in your game development career, you're going to need to set up some kind of sequence of events. For a while, Unity didn't really have any answer to this. We had to use some convoluted mix of scripting and the animator state machine, which, while amazingly complex and powerful, is god-awful to work with when all you want to do is move some things around in order. God, there's so many squares and lines, I'm so confused! Fortunately, some smart cookies at Unity Technologies realised that if they were going to crack the film and TV market, they probably needed something more akin to what people working in those markets are used to. The rather aptly named Timeline. Now, on the surface, Timeline is presented as this ultimate solution to all of the problems of yesteryear. Except that if you're not making a film, and instead you're designing a video game with scripts and dependencies and components, you begin to realise there's a whole load of extra work you're going to need to do if you want to get it to play nice with all of those nasty custom scripts of yours. Unfortunately, out of the box, Timeline is incredibly limited. But it's also incredibly powerful. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to extend Timeline to control settings on components in our game. We're going to look at how to build a custom playable and use it to control and update text for some subtitles. One of the biggest issues with Timeline is the fact that out of the box, it kind of only does three things. Play animations and clips, play audio, and turn game objects on or off. Now, this might be fine if you're only trying to do a very basic cinematic and you're happy to have thousands of animations and clips in your project, for each change you want Timeline to make to your game. But personally, I find that this doesn't scale well at all. If I've got a game with even a couple of cinematics and I'm animating everything in Timeline just to open a door or change the color in a light, I'm wasting so much time and energy and the project gets messy real fast. In my ideal version of Timeline, I want to be able to drag any component into the window and then be able to create clips with different settings to switch between as the Timeline plays. And while we won't be able to drag just any component into the window, Today we are going to learn how we can extend Timeline to allow us to edit and change settings on any component in our project through a feature known as Custom Playables. So I've set up a little opening sequence to a game here using Timeline, and it has everything you may expect from a traditional sequence. Some animation tracks, animation clips, and some audio. Let's take a quick look at the scene in action. Now, you're finally awake. So you seem to be stuck in an escape pod. I have no idea how you managed to get stuck in there. But let me see if I can get you out. Oh, uh, looks like I've accidentally triggered the emergency jettison. Well, that's not good, is it? Okay, hold on, I think I've got it under control. Yeah, that should do it. Hello. You might have noticed in this scene, I've actually switched up the light colour a number of times. But I'm not controlling this with an animation track. In fact, I've actually created a custom track in Timeline that accepts a light and allows me to create clips that can control the light. As you can see, as the Timeline plays, the light changes colour based on whatever colour is set on the clip. This is an entirely custom addition to Timeline, using the Custom Playables framework. Something I'd love to add to this is subtitles. I think it'd be great to have a track in the Timeline that lets me create clips and define text to show as a subtitle. So let's take a look at how we can go about creating that with custom playables. Extending Timeline requires us to create four main scripts. A track asset script to control logic for creating a track, a playable asset script to allow us to create clips on the track, a playable behavior script to allow us to define behavior logic when Timeline reaches the clip, and another playable behavior script, a track mixer, to control how our clips blend between one another. Let's start by creating a script to allow us to add a track for our subtitles. In here, let's extend from the Track Asset class and set the track binding type to Text Mesh Pro. And like that, we can create a subtitle track in our timeline and assign our text element to it. So now we need to add the support to create clips and blend them. Let's start by creating a new subtitle behavior script. In here, we'll extend from the Playable Behavior class and add a new public string called subtitle text. This will act as the data for our clip to write to. Next, let's create our clip. We'll add a new script called subtitle clip, and in here we'll extend from the playable asset class. We'll then create a public string for our subtitle text, 
which will allow us to set the text in the editor. Next, we need to override the create playable method. And here, we'll write our logic for creating a playable behavior. We'll create a playable using the constructor and then get the subtitle behavior using the get behavior method on the playable. Then we'll set the subtitle text on the behavior from the subtitle text on the clip. While this may seem a little confusing to transfer the data this way, depending on what you're doing with your custom playables, it's possible that some settings on the clip actually determine different things about how we create our playable. Once we've set up our behavior, we then return the playable and complete the method. Final thing we need to do is tell the track that it can create these clips. So in our subtitle track, let's add the track clip type attribute. With that, we can go into our timeline and start adding our clips to our track. The only problem is that we haven't told timeline what to do when our playable asset is, well, played. Let's jump into our playable behavior asset and override the process frame method. The player data is the object that our track is bound to. So we can cast a text mesh pro as we know that our text element is the binding. And we then simply set the text to the subtitle text on this behavior and set the alpha color to be the weight of the clip. This will allow us to fade the text in and out using the ease settings on our clip. If we now head back into Unity, the clip we created earlier displays our text. Great. If we move between our two clips here, the text swaps between them. And if we add half a second of easing in and out, the weight affects the alpha and the text fade in and out. The only problem is that when we move off of our clip or start at the beginning of our timeline, the text doesn't start as empty or faded out. This is because we're directly controlling the text from each instance of our clip. So when there's no clip, timeline doesn't know what to do. Now we could maybe add a clip for every piece of empty text, but that could get annoying and tedious quite quickly. And I'd like the track to be a little bit smarter than that. This is where track mixing comes in. Track mixing basically takes a look at all of the clips on a track and allows us to tell timeline how to mix them together. Instead of the clips themselves controlling the behavior, our track will. So let's create a new script called subtitle track mixer, and let's have this also extend from the playable behavior class. Let's remove the process frame method from our subtitle behavior and create it inside of our track mixer script instead. Let's default our text and alpha to zero. Then let's get all of the clips on our track using the get input count method. Let's write a for loop to iterate through them. Inside here, we'll create a float to get the input weight for the current index. And we'll check if the input weight is above zero. So we know we're working with our active clip. We'll then use this as the active clip to set both the subtitle text and alpha of our component. The final thing we need to do is tell our track to actually use this track mixer to control the playable behaviors. And we do this by overriding the create track mixer method. Now, if we head back into Unity and look at our timeline, when a clip isn't active, our text is successfully hidden. We just need to go through and build out the rest of the subtitles for our sequence. Now, there's obviously a lot more things you can do with timeline and more ways you could use the custom playables in your project. But I know that subtitles are something that go hand in hand with cinematic sequences. So I figured it would be useful to make a video showcasing how to approach it. We're scratching the surface at some of the ways we can extend timeline. So I've posted a few links below to some resources that go over playable behaviors in a bit more detail. It's also worth mentioning that in 2019.1, Unity added timeline signals and emitters as an alternative way to extend timeline by interacting with code through Unity events. It's well worth taking a look at if you just want to send some messages and events around. So there's a link below for that too. And that's it from me. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more game dev tips, tricks, and tutorials. And if you're interested in sticking around and seeing more videos like this, maybe check out some of these videos on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.